Hello, welcome to Yin and Restorative Yoga with Gentle Movements. For today, I wanted to read from the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which was written in 1350 and is an accumulation of ancient Sanskrit uh, yoga philosophy and practice teachings. And it says here, the real purpose of Hatha Yoga. So you might know already that Hatha Yoga comprises the physical asanas, the pranayama, the breathing practices, and um, pretty much that. So in the last 40 years, Hatha Yoga has been accepted as a therapeutic science all over the world, and many scientific studies have been conducted in this field. Today, we teach yoga to people because it is very necessary. People have become sick and medical science is not able to meet the challenge. Hatha yoga, however, has been helping everybody. So this is actually a modern day translation of it. Therefore, we do not want to discourage this aspect, but at the same time, we should not forget what Hatha yoga really stands for. Behind every sick person, there is a spiritual being. Behind a diabetic, there is a yogi. Behind a person suffering from depression, there is an aspirant. When a patient comes for help, teach them yoga and make them better treat their sickness, but do not stop there. Take them further into the spiritual domain of life. This is the mistake that most yoga teachers make in the West. They just take a patient with arthritis, rheumatism, or insomnia, teach them a few exercises, and that is it. Hatha yoga has not been used to treat the total personality. This is why teachers are not able to raise the level of their pupils. Just to improve the physical health is not enough. The mental health must also improve. The nature must change. The personality must change. The psychological and the psychic framework also has to change. You should not merely feel freedom from disease, but freedom from bondage and from the vagaries of the mind. Now the time has come when teachers in every part of the world must understand and transmit the true spirit of Hatha Yoga. So as you find a comfortable seat, let's take a moment to pause and be still. Position your body so that you can feel your weight evenly distribute into the surface below it. And then as well, lifting your spine so that your breath can have an open area in the torso to circulate freely. And just let your breath be as it is. Tune into what you're feeling in your physical state, mentally scanning your body. And as you feel the way that your body is naturally breathing right now, notice how it gives you information of your energetic body. Sense your mind, what the activity is like there, the energy of your thoughts, noticing if they're busy, compounded, feeling restless, or spacious, calm, or maybe a little bit of both. So remember to pay attention for the sake of paying attention. We're not trying to judge any part of ourselves as good or bad. We're just becoming more aware as we sit, like we do in meditation. And sense your emotional state, what feels activated in you, what lies beneath the surface. Can you tune into anything in your felt sense, which is 
a lot more subtle than physical sensation. And then place your hands wherever in your body that allows you to connect your outer being with your inner being. Maybe hands together at the heart or one hand at the middle of your chest, one hand at the lower belly. Now let's begin to deepen the breath. Slowly inhale through the nose. Gently exhale through the mouth. Inhale, maybe a little deeper. This time pause for a few seconds at the top. And at your own pace, exhale a little slower. Pausing a few seconds at the bottom. And on your own, try this maybe another two to three cycles of breath. Observe that your body remains relaxed. The shoulders continue to rest slightly back and down. The crown continues to rise tall. Integrating skillful breathing with mental awareness and physical alignment. What would you like to create in your practice today? What kind of energy would you like to cultivate or strengthen from within? I invite you to take a moment to clarify to yourself your intention, your heart rooted sankalpa for your practice. And along with that, in the practice of Ishvara Pranidhana, surrendering to the divine, remembering our interconnectedness with all of life, all of life around us, to whom or to what cause would you like to dedicate your practice to? There's a mantra often sung at the beginning or end of a yoga practice, and it goes like this in Sanskrit. Loka, samasta, sukinu, bhavantu. And in English, it means may all beings be happy and free, and may my thoughts, actions, words, presence contribute to that happiness and freedom. Loka samasta sukinu bhavantu. And together, let's open up the space with resonance, sharing our practice as a community by chanting three ohms. Let's empty this breath. Fill up with an inhale. Oh. Let's ease into the practice of ujjayi pranayama, breathing in and out slowly and evenly through the nose so the lips are closed, while gently narrowing the back of your throat so that you can hear a faint whispering sound to your breath that allows you to track the quality of your breathing so that it aligns with the intention that you just set. 
just staying aware of your breath. Take a look at the way you're sitting. And if you're sitting cross-legged, let's switch the cross of the leg that's forward or on top. If you're not sitting cross-legged, you might want to shift the way you're sitting just to change it up. And we're going to start with Sufi rolls, beginning to warm up the pelvic sacral region. So press your hands down into your lap, lift up through the spine, but relax the shoulders. And then begin to lean back. Inhale, sway the torso to the left and forward. Exhale, the torso to the right and back. Keep going. Inhale to the left and forward. Exhale to the right and back. Several more cycles of breath here. And then as you feel ready, switch direction. Inhaling. Exhaling. All the while rooting down through your left and right sitting bones. You might imagine there's a floating hula hoop surrounding the widest part of your rib cage, and you're tracing the inner circumference of that hula hoop with your ribs. Switch directions again. And one last time, switch directions. helping to lubricate the joints of the spine and even your hip joints. And then from here, place your hands on your knees, lug the pelvis down, and as you breathe in, rotate your shoulder heads back and down, lift your chest, look up. And as you breathe out, hollow your belly, drop your chin and round your back, seated cat cow. Bita Lasana. Inhale, roll the shoulders back and down. Broaden your chest, look up. Exhale, contract your abdomen, look down. Keep going nice and slow, synchronizing your movement to your breath. Can you feel your shoulder blades moving around? Swiping down and across your back. Can you feel your collarbones stretching a little wider apart as you inhale to look up? Can you feel the toning of your abdomen as you drop the chin to round? Take about three or more cycles of breath. Keep the sound of your breath going. And from here, inhale your arms overhead, plug the shoulder bones down. Exhale, turn your chest to your left as I'm mirroring you. Land the fingertips just for a tap, whatever they'll reach. If they reach anything, inhale the arms up, come back to center. Exhale, twist to the other side, maybe look behind you, lower the arms. Just like that, a mini vinyasa flow. Inhale, center. Exhale, twisting across your waist. Inhale, center, getting a little taller. Exhale, turning your ribcage, the pelvis rooted. Going to maybe four more cycles of breath. Climbing the in breath from the base or bottom of your spine all the way up each vertebra to your crown. And then feeling that rinsing effect as you breathe out, that gentle massaging across your abdomen. Nice, and then from here, let's extend your left leg out open to the left side. Flex the foot so that there's some stability here. Bring your right heel just about in front of your pelvis. 
and then place your left hand onto the outside of your left leg or on top of your left leg. Raise the right arm up. Plug your two hips down, lift up to your crown, and then exhale, side bend just a little bit to your left. Take your time for five breaths here. Inhale, plug the right hip down. Lift up through the center of your spine. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Exhale, maybe continue to side bend. Finding whatever range is available right now without straining for the last three breaths. See if you can lengthen this left side of your torso under you as well. And then as you keep reaching up and towards the left wall with your right fingertips, let's start to move the skull. Inhale, look up past your right elbow. And then slowly exhale, turn your head to look down past your left elbow. Try that a few more times like you're shaking your head no very slowly. Inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Three more breaths. Follow your pace. And you feel the energy through your right fingertips. And then we'll switch sides, bending the left knee open, bring the heel of your left foot in front of the pelvis. Turn out your right leg straight, flex the foot for stability and place your right hand either onto your right leg or to the outside of it. Raise the left arm, plug your two sitting bones, lift through the center of your spine, breathe in. Then exhale just a little bit at a time, side bend to your right. Pause, really plug the left hip down as you lift through the center of your spine, inhaling. And then exhaling, maybe side bend a little more. Three more breaths. Feel the reach up and out to the right through your left fingertips. And then find some space along the right side of your torso. So we're not completely scrunching into it, but we're lifting from the pelvis and then reaching over. And then let's start to turn the head on your next inhale. Slowly look up past your left elbow. And then as you exhale, gently look down past your right elbow. Inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Keep going another three cycles of breath. And then inhale to rise all the way up. So we're gonna continue with a little bit more gentle movement and then we'll be still for quite a bit after that. So let's come on up to the top of your mat. You may wanna bring your two blocks and place them in front of your feet. So the blocks are on their tallest height. You'd like to press into the blocks instead of the floor, your legs. And come to stand in mountain pose, separating your feet hips distance and parallel to each other. And spread your toes and take a moment here as you stand tall with the palms facing forward by your sides to elongate your tailbone like a heavy anchor seeking the ground right between your heels. And then as you soften in the bottom of your front ribs, letting the belly gently tone, lift up through the crown of your head and allow your chin to just be a natural space away from your chest. And then spreading your toes, rock your weight forward to as far as you can balance. Rock your weight back. And then take that a few times until you can evenly disperse your weight throughout the four corners of each foot. And really feel a sense of rebounding your weight off the ground so that energy lifts up through your legs. A little activation in the front of the thighs, lifts up through the chest, up through the back of your skull. Feel that interplay. There's always a, a yin and a yang. Finding that balance. And then imagine you can breathe in from the soles of your feet 
all the way up your legs, all the way up your torso, your arms. And then from the crown of your head, exhaling the breath down, your body back down into the earth. Try that two more times, inhaling, filling up from bottom to the top. Exhaling slowly from top to bottom. Use this visualization to also scan your body energetically. Is there anything unnecessarily tensing? Yes, there's some activation to create stability. Where might you also soften? So again, there's the yin and the yang. As you press down to your soles, inhale, circle your arms overhead. Hook your thumbs like an eagle, gently pulling the thumbs apart to keep them together. Peel your shoulder heads towards behind your ears. Keep drawing the tailbone down between the heels and then slide the shoulder blades down your back. Maybe look up a little bit of a back bend. Take another breath in as you lift your sternum your knees, exhale, sweep the arms apart to bow forward. Press your fingertips on your legs, blocks, or the floor, and inhale, lift your heart through the gates of your arms. Feel the full length of your spine as the shoulders glide back. Exhale, hinge from your hips, drop your head. Press to your feet, inhale, circle your arms. Overhead, switch the hook of your thumb on top, if you remember the non-default one. And then exhale, gently coil your chest up, but keep reaching the tailbone right between your heels. Maybe look up as you inhale. Exhale, bend the knees and bow forward again. Press with your fingertips, inhale, raise your heart forward. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold in. From down to your feet, inhale, circle your arms with the other thumb on top. Exhale, gently coil the chest open without overarching the lower back. Take another inhale, lift your sternum. Exhale, bend the knees and bow forward. Let's take one more of these. Inhale, lift the heart forward, stretch through the sides of your torso. Exhale, fold. Ground to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, switch the hook of your thumbs. Exhale, gently roll the shoulders back and down, lift the heart. Keep lengthening the tailbone as you inhale. Exhale, bow forward. Press into the blocks. Inhale, reach the heart forward, lengthen. Walk the blocks to the outsides of your heels. Exhale, step the left knee to the ground in a kneeling lunge. A little more movement, inhale, peel the shoulders down, coil your chest up. Exhale, lift the ball of your right foot flexed, straighten the front leg and bow inside of it. Let's continue this flow. Inhale, re-bend the front knee, coil your chest up. Exhale, scissor the right hip back to straighten the leg and fold. Listen to your breath and let it pace you through three more cycles of this movement. And as you're coiling your chest and as you're bowing forward, keep the same firming in of your lower belly. Feel that sense of supporting your lower back. How does it feel to bring your intention into this physical practice? that intention that you stated to yourself. From here, tuck your left toes, come back into a lunge and step the left foot hips distance from the right foot. Step the right knee back, simply switch sides in your lunge. Inhale here and coil your chest up. So lift the ball of your left foot flex. This way the hip back. Straighten your front leg as you fold. Keep going, inhale, lunge. Coil the chest up. Exhale, 
inhale, scissor the left back. Bow with a feeling of a flat back. Keep going three more cycles to your breath. And then after you finish this round, we're going to set up for a restorative version of child's pose. It's actually a restorative version of that one. So take your pillow, and we're going to straddle the bottom edge of that pillow. And you can decide if you want to prop up some blocks um, actually in front of the front edge of the pillow. This can be for your forehead. You can also put a blanket across the pillow for your belly so make it as cushiony as you can because we're going to give it a bear hug knees are splayed apart so the inner edges of your feet are towards each other maybe they're touching each other and then let your forehead rest on the pillow adjusting the height excuse me not the pillow the blocks adjusting the height of the blocks so that you can feel your neck naturally curved Strain in the neck. This is a throat is open for your breath. And then as you're situating yourself towards stillness, make any last adjustments here so you can feel some symmetry in your left and right shoulders, your left and right arms, your left and right hips, legs, feet. And then notice where you're feeling any sensation that might have changed or amplified, if any. Imagine breathing specifically into that area. We're going to be here for another three minutes. Let that area or your breath become your focal point. And as you invite a meditative state into your asana. Feeling the full length of your breath, both in and out. Continue your mindful breathing.
let's finish two more deep breaths in this posture. Taking your time when you're ready to come up, press your fingertips into the ground and slowly roll your spine upright and off the pillow. And let's move the props aside so that we can sit up with the legs in front of us. You may want to sit on a folded blanket here as we come into a half version of Gomukhasana. So grab a strap, you may find it helpful. And so the way you'll know if you'll want to use a blanket is to first extend both legs and see if your back automatically starts to round. Then you might find it helpful to prop up the pelvis towards the front edge of that folded blanket or a pillow, something kind of firm. So your pelvis slightly tilts forward and then as you slightly firm the belly in, you can lift up, especially from the lower back. Now from here, extending your left leg forward, turn out your right thigh at the hip and then cross your right thigh over your left thigh as much as you can so that maybe your two knees stack down the middle. Take the strap, whether you have a loop on that strap or use the middle of the strap and place it around the ball of your left foot flexed. So you'll be holding the strap with two hands with enough slack so that as you're, you're pulling the strap lightly, you're also pressing the ball of the foot into the strap. There's a little bit of a tug of war with enough slack so that your shoulders are slightly behind the ears and down and then lift up through the back of your skull and crown. Keep the spine spaciously tall and then begin to hinge forward from your hips just a little bit as you breathe out. Pause as you breathe in. Plug the sitting bones downward and elongate through the center of your spine. Use the exhales to maybe explore folding a little more. And then we'll be in this posture for also three minutes. So take your time exploring your range of motion and make sure that it's only to the point where you can still keep that natural space between your chin and chest and your shoulders are not beginning to shrug or round forward but there's even a slight baby cobra where the fronts of your shoulder heads are gently peeled back and down the back. And then listen to the sound of your breathing here. Fine tuning the quality of your breath so then again it embodies the energy of the intention you set for your practice. For example, if my intention was to find clarity and peace of mind, then my breath is focused on calmness, slow, relaxed, gentle breathing. flexing your left foot and extending your sternum forward. And let's finish two last slow breaths here in Ardha Gomukhasana, half cow face pose. With a belly slightly engaged, begin to lift your chest, inhale to rise. Remove the strap, relax your feet and extend your legs forward for a moment. If you want, shake out your legs or rotate from your 
hip sockets, your thigh bones, roll inward and outward a few times. Anything that wants to move and release, maybe even through the breath. Let's take our time setting up the second side. So if it helps to put the strap on first, you can go ahead and place the ball of your right foot into that strap. Turn out your right, uh, excuse me, your left thigh at the hip and cross the left knee over the right knee. Hold the strap so you're gently pulling it as the right foot flexes into it. Now let the shoulders roll back and down, sit up tall, breathe in. Belly slightly engaged, exhale. Hold a little bit. Inhale, ground and lengthen. Exhale, fold a little bit. Just like that for three minutes. As you're observing the pattern of your breathing, notice when it might shift in any way. And bring a sense of curiosity to that, what may have shifted internally or externally. Feel the open passageway for your breath at your throat, throughout your spine. And let's finish two more deep breaths here. Engage the belly slightly, lead with your chest. Inhale, slowly rise up. Let's put the strap aside. Extend the legs forward and again, any movement or you might opt to be still and take a few breaths there. Come to lie down on your back, but as you're making your way down, have your strap, pillow, blocks, blanket, all within reachable distance if possible. And come on down to your back. Hmm, we'll start with none of those props. As we're lying down, bending the knees, set your feet on the ground about as wide as the width of your mat apart. So the knees are separated just as wide apart as your feet. And now begin to drop both of your knees over to the right side. Adjust your left leg so that your left knee is tracing down the midline of your mat. Continue your awareness of your breath here. 
and then bring your spotlight, your mind's eye into the left side of your pelvis from the front of it at the hip all around to the glute in the lower back. This is the area partially of your psoas, this crisscross of muscles that go across through the front of the hip creases and then around into the lower back. So notice if you're feeling plenty of sensation on the left side here. If you're seeking a bit more sensation, pick up your right foot. Cross your right ankle just above your left knee onto your left thigh. So letting the weight, the natural weight of your right leg on top, promote the lengthening of the front of your left thigh towards the front of your mat. Breathe here. And while we're in this position, you want to also open up through the sides of your torso. You can raise your arms overhead. Bend the elbows to frame your head with your arms and catch hold of opposite elbows, letting the arms drop as the shoulders release down your back. And instead of setting the timer here or watching the clock, let's take 10 deep breaths before switching sides. Here's a little game you might play each time you breathe out. Notice a part of your body that you might further relax while you're in this position. New part of the body to relax each exhalation. A little scavenger hunt for tension. <laughs> Last two breaths. And then let's slowly unwind back to center where you can step the feet apart again on the ground, about mat width apart. Pause here for a moment, knees are apart as well. Perhaps place your palms onto the front creases of your hips. And breathe into where your palms are landing, that part of your pelvis. Feel your tailbone sink as you breathe out. Four more breaths here. Get ready for the second side. Slowly drop both of your knees to your left side. Align your right knee down the center line of your mat. Pause here and notice, especially what you feel in the right side of your pelvis, from the front of the hip, down around to the You might opt to stay right here if there's plenty of sensation, plenty going on. Or if it doesn't feel like much is going on, you can pick up your left foot and place the ankle just above your right knee onto your right thigh. Allowing the front of your right thigh to gently lengthen forward. 
Give me your breath. Now, if you did so on the first side, let's balance out, reaching the arms overhead and switching the opposite elbow to hold with each hand. Dropping the arms and softening the shoulders down the back. 10 breaths here. And if you like that scavenger hunt idea, <laughs> maybe try looking for a different part of your body. Each exhale, soften and surrender. Deeper into relaxation. Looking for parts you might dismiss or overlook in your day to day doings. Last two breaths here. Take your time coming back to center. Feet apart, about mat width, knees apart, just as wide. Maybe resting your hands onto the front creases of your hips, breathing into under your, underneath your palms. Allowing your pelvis to sink with each breath out. Now let's take the strap again. Bend your right knee into your chest so that you can step the ball of your right foot into the strap. Extend your right leg upright, holding the strap in your right hand. And now you can keep the left foot on the ground so the left knee is bent or straighten the left leg forward, flexing both feet. Use your left palm to root down the back of your left hip by pressing into the top of your left thigh. Then rotate your right thigh externally, which means turn it out before you begin to open your right leg out to the right side. About 10 breaths. In supine variation of hand to big toe pose or Supta Uttita Hasta Parangushtasana. Feel that the backs of your shoulders are evenly grounded here, just like the backs of your hips are evenly grounded. And about halfway through, deep breathing, After you finish this exhale, slowly bend your right knee back into your chest. Removing the strap, we'll switch it over to the ball of your left foot, flexed. And then again on this side, as you extend the left leg upright and hold the strap in your left hand, decide if you'd rather keep your right knee bent, keep the sole of the right foot on the floor, 
or straighten the right leg forward with a foot flexed, pressing the right palm down onto the top of your right thigh. Turn out your left thigh at the hip and begin to open your left leg, taking 10 deep breaths. forgot to mention, but you might already know that you can catch your outer leg with your pillows or blocks. As you finish this exhalation, Rebend your left knee into your chest to remove the strap. And let's take happy baby pose. You bend your knees wide to the outsides of your shoulders. Thread your forearms in front of your shins and catch hold of your outer calves or feet. As you root your tailbone, shoulders, and head down, you can also put your head on a pillow here, Splay your feet as wide apart as you can keep them parallel to each other and both soles facing up towards the sky. Breath by breath, drawing the knees downward towards the ground outside of your shoulders. Keep your tailbone rooting into the earth. 10 breaths. Then you might opt to also rock side to side, gently massaging your sacrum. Last two breaths and happy baby. And then hug your knees together into your chest. Maybe lift the head and shoulders and squeeze them tightly. And then you might choose to rock forward and back a few times, just giving your back a little massage up and down or side to side a few times. Eventually, Make your way up so that we can sit for a pranayama practice before we rest in Shavasana. If it feels okay on your knees, I invite you to sit into some variation of hero's pose in which your shins are down on the floor, knees are no wider than hips distance apart, and the toes are all pointing back, feet are not turned out. So if it doesn't feel so great sitting directly on your calves, you can use a pillow or a block or a stack of blocks and make a stool by placing that prop right between your ankles so that you can sit directly on them and bend the knees less. Now, if it feels okay to sit directly on your calves, you could also roll the calves gently aside and sit on the ground. Take your hands for a moment and hold your rib cage, at the lowest part of your rib cage. Plug your pelvis downward and lift your rib cage, especially the back ribs. Let the belly slightly draw in. You feel a lengthening in your lower back as the pelvis roots down and the rib cage lifts. Keep that lengthening. Now soften the shoulders back and down and find that openness in your chest, that lift to your crown. So today's breathing technique I'd like to propose is alternate nostril breathing uh, for rebalancing the left and right hemispheres of the body, um, helping to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain, that feminine and masculine energy, also known as the yin and the yang, the shakti and shiva energy. 
So to begin, rest your left hand on your lap. Choose a mudra if you like. Thumb and index finger to touch for focusing. A pran mudra, which is like a peace sign with the index and middle fingers stuck together. Palm face up, which is to help cultivate vital energy. Now the right hand is in Vishnu mudra. And that's sticking out your right thumb, pinky, and ring finger. So the index and middle fingers are curled in. We'll use the right thumb to cover the right nostril. We'll use the right ring and pink finger to cover the left nostril, alternating. So when you breathe in or out through one nostril, when the other is closed, imagine you're breathing in or out through that entire half of your body, the left or the right side. So maybe close your eyes and steady an inward gaze at your brow center towards Ajna Chakra. And exhale completely. You're just breathing through the nose. Hold the breath for a moment. Use the right thumb to cover your right nostril. Inhale through the left about six counts slowly. Hold it in about three counts. Cover the left nostril. Exhale through the right about six counts slowly. Hold it out three. Inhale right for six. Hold it in three. Cover right. Exhale left for six. Hold it out for three. We just finished one cycle. Next cycle, inhale left. Hold. Cover left. Exhale right. Hold. Inhale right. Hold. Cover right. Exhale left. Hold. That's the second cycle. Continue two more cycles at your own pace. Next time you exhale through left nostril and hold the breath out, that's the end of the practice. So when you finish, sit a moment, maybe both hands in the same mudra. Feel into the effects of Nadi Shodhana Pranayama, alternate nostril breathing. Keep your attention on your subtle body, your energetic body. Very slowly as you ease your 
way into Shavasana. Using any props you might need to rest your body comfortably in stillness for about five minutes before meditation. <laughs> 